Hey, I'm Tom Goulet, director of The Birdwatcher Watcher, a short film that Rolling Stone magazine has said is cool. In order to get the full experience, I want to show you guys the movie making process from start to finish, beginning with the Kickstarter that made the Kickstarter that made the movie. So make sure you have your 3D glasses ready and enjoy the ride. Hi, I'm Tom Goulet. You might know me from a documentary I made where I almost killed myself while trying to teach the world about the dangers of cereal dust. Now, I'm back, and I'm ready to make my first big short film, called The Bird Watcher Watcher. I need a lot of money to make this movie really fantastic. That's why I got the idea to make this Kickstarter, to raise money to make a better Kickstarter, to raise a lot of money to make my movie. To make sure my next Kickstarter will be an absolute slam dunk, I'm gonna do something that nobody has ever dared to do in a Kickstarter, ever. What does Avatar, The Avengers, and the re-release of the Titanic all have in common? That's right, they're 3D movies. That's why in my next Kickstarter, I'm gonna shoot it... in 3D. But that's not all. Spike Lee had one of the most successful Kickstarter videos of all time. He raised over a million dollars in only 30 days, and he did it while wearing this hat. In my next Kickstarter video, everybody's gonna be wearing this hat. I'm gonna be wearing the hat and I'm gonna buy hats for everybody to wear in the background because maybe it'll be like a subliminal thing. I noticed on the Kickstarter website that dance projects get successfully funded almost twice as often as film projects do. So just to be clear, I'm making this next Kickstarter to raise money for my film, but if I can market myself as a dancer in my next project, maybe I can get the attention of those generous dance project backers and seriously raise my chances of getting the money that I need to make my film. I know it might seem like a... A long shot. But if I can get a big celebrity to say that they love my movies, I can weasel my way into their spotlight and get people really excited for my film. That's why I'm going to try to pay a Hollywood superstar to endorse me in my next video. I want you guys to go check out my Kickstarter page so you can see all the awesome rewards that you can get by donating to my project. One thing that I recommend buying is the DVD of my next Kickstarter video. For only $25, you'll get a hard copy DVD of my next Kickstarter video with 3D glasses included. There's going to be a bunch of awesome exclusive features on the DVD that you won't be able to see anywhere else. There's going to be deleted scenes, director's commentary, and a director's commentary of the director's commentary where I talk about why I said the things that I said during the director's commentary. Guys, we're almost there. I've got my script written out, I've drawn out all the storyboards, I've got my crew together. All that's left to do is make this Kickstarter and make it great. So guys, I'm looking to raise $500 in the next 30 days so that I can make this next Kickstarter amazing. But remember, $500 is the bare minimum amount of money that I need to make this video. If I can raise more than $500, I'm going to make this video insane. I'm talking puppies, stunt doubles of me, horses, it's going to be wild. So please, donate to my project and share it to all your friends. Because the more attention that it gets, the better it can be, and we're going to make it Smash hit. Hey Kickstarter, I'm Tom Goulet. I'm making a movie and I need your help. My story starts when I was just a baby. Ever since I was born, I've been fascinated with the movement of my body and the world and the objects around me. <laughs> and so I discovered dance. To be perfectly honest, dance has always been my first love. I've done every type of dance imaginable. Ballroom, Latin, um, the YMCA. My friends and family call me Pirouette Tom because I'm always dancing around the house. I feel like I would either die or kill myself if I couldn't get at least an hour of dancing every day. But now, I'm making a movie. The name of my short film is The Bird Watcher Watcher. It's a film about a bird watcher watcher who accidentally falls in love with a bird watcher. 
It's a classic Romeo and Juliet tale with a little sprinkle of America's favorite pastime, bird watching. And with your help, it can be possible. I take my film seriously, and I'm really good at what I do. But don't just take my word for it. Listen to what the Silver Fox of Hollywood has to say. Tom Goulet? Yeah, he's, he's great. Two months ago, you guys helped me raise the money that I needed to make this Kickstarter video. And I cannot thank you guys enough. So here I am now, asking for $1,500 to make the bird watcher watcher. Go check out my Kickstarter page. There's a bunch of awesome rewards that you can get by donating to the project. For $100, you can even name the main character of the movie. That's me. I've written the script, I've found my actors, I've already storyboarded every shot of the film, and I have my whole crew together. The only thing left to do is film this damn movie. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Buster? Sorry guys, that's my new puppy Buster that I bought with the extra money from my last Kickstarter. matter. Doi. 30% of the money will be going towards props and costumes. 20% will be going towards equipment. 40% will be going towards food to keep the cast and crew happy. And 10% will be going towards dog food so that my puppy won't die. And remember, the Kickstarter is an all or nothing platform, which means that if I don't fully reach my goal, I don't get to keep any of the money that I raised, including the money that I need to keep Buster alive. <laughs> Sorry, Buster. Guys, thank you so much for watching this Kickstarter video. I really hope it makes you want to spend money on it and share it with your friends. If I can reach my goal, I swear this movie is going to be absolutely perfect. You ever get that weird feeling like you're being watched by somebody? It's sort of a hard thing to explain, but I guess it sort of feels like somebody's watching you. Some people hate this feeling, and so they become bird watchers. They feel a sense of control being the ones watching. But why birds? I wish I could tell you the answer, but I'm not a bird watcher. No, me, I'm something much, much different. I'm not sure why I even started watching bird watchers in the first place, but I think it had to do with the fact that my entire family was murdered by a man named Bobby Davin. You might know him better as the unfunny strangler because he strangles all of his victims and nobody ever laughs at his jokes. But he killed every single one of my siblings. Bob, Dakota, Dylan, Ellen, Ellie, Jack, Jens Christian, Philip, and Sam. I was completely broken. But the only thing that gave me a sense of control was watching bird watchers. It started off as just people watching, but I found that the most interesting people to watch were people that were watching something else. It was just a hobby, but it turned into something much more than that. I came across something in my book one day that I just couldn't ignore. It was a type of beauty that I didn't think existed in the real world. My life changed forever the day that I came across the flat-chested hippie.
Working late again, bud. Yeah, I've been falling behind a little bit. I got a lot on my mind. You religious? Uh, yeah, kinda. Helps me stay focused on my work. Ezekiel 22.12. Action is the key to all success. Back to work, bud. My boss was right. If the flat-chested hippie was actually real, she wasn't gonna come to me. And if I wanted to find her, I had to get to work. As Spike Lee said in his famous Kickstarter, we're in that 30-day grind to build history to make our goal. But for me, that goal was a lot harder than just raising money. I was looking for love, and I was going to do anything to find it, even if that meant killing myself. But luckily, it mostly just meant having a lot of patience and standing in the woods. I wasted a lot of money trying to stay warm in the winter, but eventually I realized that bird watchers probably weren't going to be out in the winter, and it was stupid to try looking. I'll admit that. But I knew there was going to be some type of pain if I wanted some type of gain. But my mind started to play tricks on me. Because the closer I thought I was getting, the further I actually was. But after a certain point, I just wanted to give up. But that was a dangerous thought. Because right when I was ready to quit... Shh. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare your bird away. Don't worry about it. That's what bird watching's about. The little glimpses of beauty. But you get it, you're a bird watcher, right? Oh. Uh, yeah. I'm a bird watcher. I'm sorry, I just... I don't see a lot of bird watchers like you around here. You're funny, uh... Lily. Budweiser, I'm loving it Nike swoosh. You can just call me Bud. Hey, you've got nice hair. You shouldn't hide it in a bun like that. Can I? I d Whoa, um, what are you? What? I... You said I was funny. You just said that you liked my hair. Yeah, it's true. I wasn't lying, but there's someone else in my life. Do you have a boyfriend? Well, not exactly. I have a bird friend? I'm dating a seagull. I know it's kind of strange because I'm a bird watcher and he's a bird, but he's unlike any other person or bird I've ever met. His wings are so strong and his beak is so hard and he makes me feel really special and loved. Sometimes he'll chew my food for me and feed it to me with this really sexy look in his eyes. And, I mean, you seem like a good guy and all, but there's a bird in my life. I'm sorry. I learned an important lesson that day. Just because you want something really bad doesn't mean it's yours. You can work as hard as you want, but sometimes you fail. And that's okay. But the most important lesson of all is that if you think you have control because you are the one watching, you should think again.
Wow, what a ride. I hope you enjoyed it. But keep those seatbelts fastened, because I'm about to show you guys a couple minutes of the movie making process and the behind the scenes. Let's go. I'm Ellen. I did the food. Um, making it was pretty easy because Tom never had me make anything except hot dogs, so I got pretty good at it. I can't stand food waste, especially when it's food that you don't need to throw out, like bread loaf ends or cereal dust. So I made sure none of that was happening on set. Tom's pretty good on uh, not wasting any food, so I had to siphon the hot dog water into two big Gatorade containers, one for regular hot dog water and one for Gatorade flavored hot dog water. The regular hot dog water was better, but I didn't, I mean, it, neither of them were good. With the Kickstarter money, I was able to get my dog some of his favorite takeout dishes, and so, he was a happy dog. Hey, Buster. Got you some Cheesecake Factory. Eat the nachos. They are $40 for everything. Just eat it. Buster. Buster. The Kickstarter rewards created a lot of problems. First of all, I let an unlimited number of people donate to have their names used as a character in the movie. Bob, Dakota, Dylan, Ellen, Ellie, Jack, Jans Christian, Philip, and even Sam. Second of all, I let someone name the main character of the movie anything they wanted. Are you kidding me? He's trying to get me sued. Well, first of all, it was distracting, but also I can get sued now because I had the name, the slogan, and the logo of three different companies all in my name. What he didn't realize though when he named me was that he gave me the right to use his name as a character in the movie and I could make him whatever I wanted. After killing my entire family, I'll never forgive Bobby Davin. But even if he didn't kill my family, he's really unfunny and nobody likes him. He's just a giant piece of shit. For some reason, my actress didn't want to actually kiss me. So I had to come up with an invention on the fly that made it look like I was kissing her, but not let me actually kiss her on the lips. All right, so just keep recording until I say cut. All right. Luckily, I made more than one ring pop for the scene. Hey, can I get another ring pop? This one's... Yeah. One left. Hey, I'm Jake, the behind the scenes cameraman. Well, uh, my job was to do the behind the scenes, follow Tom around with my camera, but then people started following me around with the camera. I got the impression that it was kind of like a double behind the scenes, you know? And I guess Tom wanted a camera crew following the camera crew following me, so I guess it was a triple behind the scenes kind of operation. I love behind the scenes, but I'm interested to see what's going on behind the behind the scenes and then what's going on behind those scenes, and sometimes I found it hard to know when to stop. Luckily, I was able to burn real Kickstarter money in the movie because when I tried to burn fake paper money that I'd printed out, it just didn't look realistic at all. Yeah, it just burns way too fast. Apparently, it's illegal to burn real money though, so when I was burning the actual Kickstarter money, I made sure to get video evidence saying that it was fake money, which uh, I think would hold up in court. Fake money burn. Take four. Since I had $100 of burned money, I tried to buy hot dogs with it, but uh, they wouldn't take it. Uh, do you guys take half burned money? The last step in the process was marketing the movie, and I wanted to get a good review from a famous magazine. So I went online and I started Facebook friending people who interned at different famous magazines. And I started liking their pictures and complimenting their pictures, and I basically wanted them to like me. Then, I sent them all a cut of my movie, and I asked them what they thought. Luckily, a guy who interned at Rolling Stone magazine said that it was cool. So I took that little bit of his review, and I was able to legally put it on all of my posters and all my advertisements. So then, basically, the only thing left was to show America that Rolling Stone magazine thought that my movie was cool. And the only way I knew how to do that was get on Good Morning America.